Good evening. My name is Sister Catherine Ryan, and I'm privileged to serve as the Executive Director of Maryville Academy. And tonight I am delighted to be bringing you two very dedicated staff who are going to speak about a particular program that we have at Maryville Academy, our Madden Center Shelter. So I am sitting here tonight with the director of the program, Fred Smith. Fred, welcome tonight. Thank you, Sister Ryan. It's great to be here with you. Uh, Fred, would you tell our viewers a little bit about our Madden Shelter? Well, our Madden Shelter is a uh, shelter for pregnant parents and teen girls and older adolescent girls. We serve the population of uh, ages 14 through 20, um, pregnant moms and uh, parenting moms with their uh, babies. And we also have older adolescent girls uh, from age 18 through 20. Uh, the program is at 1658 West Grand Avenue, um, where we take time to educate our young ladies on how to be effective parents. Uh, we are with the contract with uh, Department of Children and Family Services. Um, our young ladies come to us through Department of Children and Family Services. They have um, either had uh, interrupted in place when they was at another place before coming to us, or they are new to the DCFS system, which they come to the emergency shelter system before coming to us. And so, Fred, unlike some of the other programs we have at Maryville, w this particular program is not one that people just walk in uh, and ask for service. Is that right? Correct. They have to um, be uh, part of the Department of Children and Family Services, and they enter through um, what is called the Emergency Reception Center before coming to us. So, again, they have to be a part of the Department of Children and Family Services before entering the Madden Shelter System. And the reason we're talking about the program tonight is we would like our viewers to know some of the needs of our children and some of the care that we try to help provide and we'll end with a message about how we all together uh, need to provide care. But that's going to come from you, Fred, and from our next guest as well. So, Fred, when a young lady comes to the Madden Shelter, can you tell us what that first day is like? Um, the, the first day is they, they come in, they either uh, meet with the staff or, one of our, uh, or, or with our case manager, and um, they are given the expectation of the program and how the program is ran. They are given what their rights are um, um, through the state and how the program is ran. Uh, each young lady is given a care basket. And the reason we do that, Sister Ryan, is to make every young lady feel special to the program. Each young lady is provided their own private room. Uh, none of our young ladies share rooms with other clients. Uh, they're given a tour of the building um, when they first get there, and they're introduced to every staff and every individual that's working in the program at that time. Um, we also give them uh, information what the program have uh, coming up, such as activities and outings and things like that. We give them a schedule of how the day is going to be uh, Monday through Sunday and what the expectation will be throughout the day. And uh, we also educate the young ladies who do have kids that come to the program on how child care would be for their kids when they're out at school or at work. Uh, we encourage all of our young ladies to be uh, truly involved in their educational career. So that is one of the main things that, that, that we stress when they first come in to ensure uh, that they don't have to worry about care for their kids when it's time for them to go to school and things like that. Now, do some of the young ladies return to the school they were attending before they came to Madden? All of our young ladies have the right to go to whatever their home school was prior to coming to Madden, uh, regardless of where that location is at. Uh, right now, we have one uh, young lady in the program that attends schools in one of the far south suburbs. Uh, our, uh, case manager and uh, education learners uh, uh, individual went out and set up a cab for this young lady to be picked up every morning at Madden and driven to the far, uh, far south suburbs and picked back up after school to be turned back to the program. And why is that important, Fred, that the, that the young ladies continue at the school they were attending? Uh, the reason that's so important, Sister Ryan, is because they have already had a lot of disruptions in their life. And one of the last things you want to do is just work where they are receiving an education. And you always want them to have a familiarity place to go to and with the friends that they have and people that they have already built relationships with. So you don't want to uh, disrupt anything that you can keep in place that they feel comfortable with and have a bond with. So that's why we work uh, diligently to help these young ladies stay in the school that they're in. Now, Fred, one of the unique aspects of our shelter is that we serve adolescent girls and adolescent girls who are teen moms. Can you say a little bit about uh, what the special programming is we have because we have these little children with us as well? well one of the things we do is, is we t treat every young lady as an individual. 
And uh, although some of our young ladies, we have had uh, 14 year olds and even 13 year old to come to us pregnant or parenting. And one of the things we strive is to make that individual feel comfortable. We make all of our young ladies feel comfortable. And we don't want them to feel like because you are a young mom that you have done something wrong. Um, we teach them how to be great parents. We have parenting classes and we educate them on how to be a parent. And I think people have to realize that it is going to be stress for these young ladies because they are teens themselves. And it's very difficult for them to be a parent and also want to still have the active life of a 15, 16, and 17 year old. Uh, young lady. So one of the things we do is um, we provide them with breaks throughout the day to where the staff care for uh, the babies that's in the program. Uh, we have uh, classes that where we teach them how to be effective parents. Um, we also have time that we set up activities just for the moms to go out because they are still teens and they need to be able to go out and enjoy themselves. But we do stress the importance of parenting and teaching them how to be effective parenting. Uh, one of the things we have is um, baby and mom time. The way we teach them how important it is for them to talk to the baby, to play with the baby. Um, we even have classes like uh, baby massages uh, to touch the baby so they can understand how important it is for them to touch the baby, hold the baby, and interact with them because that help them uh, progress with their fine motor skills and also helps them with uh, attachment to their moms. Now, Fred, I happen to know that since today is a school holiday for our young ladies, there was a special mom and baby day. Would you like to tell our viewers about that? Yes, one thing we had planned for today was uh, activity to go to the zoo and and to to have the moms to take the babies along with them uh, as an activity. Um, we also had some young ladies to go out to, today to uh, a movie to see a cartoon with the babies. So we always try to find ways to be creative to have the moms to spend special time with their kids. Now, Fred, just in case any of our viewers are wondering, do you have any experience raising children? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm a father of four. Uh, I have a 21-year-old son that goes to the University of Toledo, and I have a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old that's in high school, and I have a 7-year-old that's in second grade. So I actually have my East Tier sister around. I have <laughs> grammar school, high school, and college. So I have a little bit uh, of experience of dealing with, with kids. and it's, it's a great experience to be a, a father. And Fred, in addition to that, with your how long have you been at Maryville Academy? I've been at Maryville since uh, 1996. Um, I've, I've worked in a variety of positions at Maryville. I was a, uh, a live-in uh, family teacher, me and my wife and two of our kids. Uh, I also worked as a program manager and um, as a youth care worker. And one more thing I'm going to ask you to tell our viewers about, Fred, because we value education and become becoming professionally prepared for this kind of work, would you tell our viewers what your academic preparation is for this? Well, I uh, currently have a master's degree in business and a master's degree in public health, and I have my undergrad in uh, communication. But one thing I do want to stress, you brought the point of how Mary Vip really values education and want all of our staff to further their education. Uh, I remember when I first came to Maryville uh, back in 96, I had six college credit hours. And those six credit hours in a foreign language that I obtained while I was serving in the military. So um, I've obtained a social degree, bachelor degree, and two master degrees while employed here at Maryville. And with the help of uh, the, the Maryville family and with tuition reimbursements, I've been able to accomplish those goals. And we do have a tuition reimbursement that pays part of the tuition cost. Correct. Now, Fred, because you're in management, I also am going to ask you to uh, help me with this pitch to our viewers. Maryville is hiring. We are yes. looking for wonderful people like Fred and like Katrina, who's going to be coming on screen in a few minutes. And we are looking for wonderful people like Katrina and Fred who want to help care for our children. So uh, at the end, we'll show a number that you can be calling. But we ask you to think about this if this is your calling to help serve our children. And I'm going to ask Fred, as, as my final question uh, to you in this evening's interview, Fred, can you? speak to someone who might be thinking maybe this is the thing for me I don't know what words of advice would you have for them uh, this is a, a great experience to be part of the Maryville family and the reason I said family because each employee is treated like a family member I mean we believe in open-door policy we believe in education we believe in promoting from within so if you're an individual that's out there that's looking to be uh, not just a job but a career and have a career that where you have an opportunity for advancement from uh, youth care work as I did to the position I hold now as director 
over at the uh, Madden Shelter now. That opportunity is here for you at Maryville. Uh, as Sister Ryan touched on earlier, we promote education. So those are things that, that, that we contribute to each employee. Each employee is valued, and this is a great place to work. It is a, a family um, atmosphere. Uh, each, As I stated earlier, each uh, management has an open-door policy. We thrive on training. Each staff that comes to Maryville is given an extensive training before even beginning to work with the clients. And through that training, you learn how to deal with different things that comes along while working with the clients that we serve at Maryville. And as Fred is uh, telling you, we, we are uh, here because of our children whom we are caring for. You're hearing tonight about one program, our Madden Center Shelter. Uh, we have a number of programs for children and it takes people who are as dedicated as Fred and Katrina, who's going to be coming on in a moment, to really make this a, a place in which our children know that they're valued, that they have a contribution to make in our society, and that they have an opportunity in a safe environment to develop those skills and to achieve for the future. So I'm going to show you the telephone number for the shelter. I want to remind you that this is a program in which we run for the uh, Department of Children and Family Services to serve children and so this is a number if you have any questions about the program. It is not a number to call if you have questions about placement of or services for a particular child uh, uh, whom you are concerned about. We'll show you that number at the end. But this is our number for the Madden Center uh, so that uh, you can s contact them if you have any questions about the kinds of services that we do provide for children, adolescent girls and their children uh, who have been referred to us by the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services for this care. And now I'm pleased to introduce Katrina Ivory. Katrina is, well, I'm going to let her introduce mm -hmm. herself in a moment, uh, but we're proud to have Katrina as a, a woman who is serving our children at the Madden Shelter. Katrina, let me ask you to introduce yourself. Will you tell our viewers, uh, first of all, how long have you been at Maryville Academy? I've been at Maryville Academy since 1994. Oh, now I have to do some math here. So in those uh, 16 years that you've been with us, what, what kind of service are you today? I'm a, I'm a youth care worker at the Madden Shelter, serving young women. And, and tell our viewers, please, what does that mean to you? Um, actually, for me, it's be, I'm part of a village for these young ladies. Uh, I teach parenting skills. I teach life skills. I teach a number of things that, that are necessary for these young women to have beyond Maryville. Now, Katrina, when the young ladies come, uh, I would venture to say that a number of them aren't quite ready to listen. Would that be true, that when they first come, they think they know what else, they know whatever they need to do? Yes, they do. They're, they're the typical teens, and what we have to understand that these young ladies have been through a lot of transition, so it, like any other relationship, it takes time to build one. And about how many uh, placements or residences have they already had in the child welfare system before they come to us? Um, some of them, quite a number of placements that have been disruptive to these children and they end up with us. Um, some of them, maybe five, six different placements. And how would you describe some of the emotions that they're feeling when these young ladies come to our shelter? There's issues with um, being secure, being safe. They need to know that they belong somewhere, and I think that's what we provide for these young ladies. And I think that we interviewed you uh, for Maryville uh, a few weeks ago, and I would like you to share with our viewers, you described how it is that you care, carry out the Maryville mission for uh, children in rebuilding lives, rekindling spirits, and renewing hope. Would you share some of that with our viewers? Sure. I actually I treat the girls as though they're part of my family. Um, I treat them as though I would like to be part of their village. My children had a village, I had a village, and I do think that every child deserves to have a village. Now tell us about your village, and then we'll ask you to tell about <laughs> your children's village. Well, my village, actually, I had a very loving family, immediate family and extended family a family that promoted us to educate ourselves. They told us that we were magnificent 
and that the sky was the limit. We could do anything that we wanted to do. And that's what I try to give our girls. And uh, just as I asked Fred, I'm going to ask you, Katrina, what do you know about raising children? Have you raised some, a family? I have two children. I have a 27-year-old that's currently attending the school to be an attorney, and I have a 25-year-old that's preparing for medical school. So you know a little bit about raising children? Just a little bit. <laughs> and how do you carry that over to our young ladies at the Madden Shelter? Um, again, I think it's just really important for these girls to know how important they are to society. I think it's important for them to know that someone cares and that there's a village waiting for them to receive them and, and just welcome them. And, and actually, Katrina, you've captured what Fred and you and I are here to carry as a message this evening. Uh, this is our program, Children First. And by that we mean that we need to make sure that all of our children have their needs attended to so that they can grow up in a safe environment, a healthy environment, and achieve the potential that they were born to achieve. And that's what you're talking about, isn't that, Katrina? Yes. About creating a village for our children. Yes. So, Katrina, I'm going to ask you, when our young ladies come, uh, can you say a little bit more about how they're feeling? And, and I'm asking it in this context. Uh, some of our young ladies come and they seem streetwise. They seem to think they've had a lot of experience. Uh, they, they may feel that there's nothing more that we can offer them when they come in our door. Uh, can you share a little bit about how you, uh, how you listen to them and speak with them and assist them? Actually, when the children come in, I think it's really important for us to listen to them. Um, and sometimes, even though they're not able to convey what their needs are, they often say it in between the lines. Mm -hmm. um, I think every child wants to be somewhere. Every person wants to be somewhere where they belong. And a lot of times, that's just it. Providing them with somewhere that they feel safe, they feel like they belong, and that's the biggest issue. And after a while, when they see that you're really there to help them, they let down guards and they trust you and you're able to give them the services that are in, that you need to give them. Now, are some of those services helping them be children? Yes, because a lot of times our girls haven't had the opportunity to be children. So, therefore, you need to do things with them that maybe they didn't get the opportunity to do that they need to experience at that time. And can you give our viewers a few of those examples? Um, taking the children to, taking the young ladies to the movies, or just sitting down playing games with them, uh, discussing things that are important in their lives, whether it's something that has happened that is traumatic, or just the everyday things like the boyfriends. Mm -hmm. So it's important that they know that what they feel matters, what they think matters, who they are matters. And what about our young mothers? Uh, some of our girls are young mothers at the same time that they're still children themselves. What are some of your observations about their struggles to be good mothers? Um, actually, I think sometimes because they haven't had a lot of parent parenting skills mentored to them, that they're just really unsure of what they're doing. So you need to let them know being a parent is not something that's a good parent is something that you learn overnight, that it's a process. And no matter how long you live and how long you be a parent, you learn different things every day. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to convey to our children, our young ladies, that it's important that you know that being a good parent takes time. And as long as you're doing the best that you can, that's all anybody can ask you for. And we're there to assist you. Now, we also emphasize education. We talked about that a little bit with Fred. Would you say something about the work that you do and how it emphasizes education with our young ladies? Um, actually, I've been given the special task of being an educational liaison for our site. I get the opportunity to network with CPS and the alternative new, um, school systems and the colleges to make sure that our girls are given what they need, that if they have um, IEPs and, and 504s, that somebody's making sure that everything is followed through for them. Sometimes it's very difficult for our girls because they have been through so many transitions that school is a little bit scary. So just to let them know that it's okay 
that you're a little bit behind but we're going to make it work we're here to assist you and make sure that things are going to be okay for you and uh, you mentioned IEPs those are the individualized educational plans yes. and the 504s yes. and uh, do you want to say a little bit about how those are used in the process to help individualize education for our girls because our young ladies often go through tr so many transitions as we know a lot of paperwork is um, is lost in motion. So we do a lot of networking with the Department of Children and Family Services and the school systems to make sure that the paperwork follows them that says what their needs are, that they're, if they have needs, that those needs are being met by that particular school system. So Katrina, what you're saying is that our young ladies live at our Madden shelter. They, of course, have their meals there. Uh, they are going to school from the Madden shelter and coming home from there and we're the home at which they are when they are there at Madden shelter we're the home at which they're coming home to to do their homework to talk about these questions that you've described um, what else happens at the Madden shelter for our girls um, again it's, it's like being part of the girls family um, we do everything from playing games with them to um, talking about recipes, uh, family life. We just do quite a bit of things with the girls um, to make them feel at home. We don't want it to just be a shelter. We want them to feel at home. So we have, you and Fred in particular, uh, and our staff, uh, have the challenge of on the one hand knowing that the young ladies are coming for a short period of time and trying to make it the best time we can for them and at the same time helping them prepare that they're going to be uh, given a longer term home through the Department of Children and Family Services. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. So in that short time you're developing relationships and covering some of these activities. Uh, do the girls go to some dances at their school? Yes, we actually just had one young lady um, go to a homecoming dance last Saturday night. And, and of course she was excited and she was talking about um, what she was going to wear and hanging out with her friends and she also has a relationship with her family so it was really a good thing it was a good time I uh, understand that you're also one of the star uh, stars who help the young ladies pick out their clothes when they're going to these special <laughs> occasions yeah I am sometimes they don't agree <laughs> <laughs> but they are young ladies and uh, our goal is to teach them uh, and make them feel like they're young ladies now where do they go after uh, Madden Shelter there's a number of different placements. They can go to transitional living, they can go to foster home, um, residential living. There are a number of different places that the children can go. Uh, our goal is, even though they're with us a short time, is to give them something that's going to help them when they leave us. Okay. Whether, whether it's setting them up with daycare or um, providing them with assistance to put them in a school after they leave. Then I think, uh, Katrina, because we are preparing these young ladies to move to the next step and we hope we've given them a safe and healthy and loving place in between uh, their, their moves, uh, we want to close this program today by thanking you and thanking Fred and emphasizing the point that both of you are making that it really does take a village to raise a child. We're part of the village and we invite all of our viewers we like to walk this path together to be a village for all of our children, particularly those who haven't had these opportunities so far in their lives. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So I thank you, Katrina, and I thank Fred for taking the time to come and talk about this really dedicated work that you have for our teen moms and our adolescent girls and the children of our teen moms at our Madden Shelter. Thank you and good evening. Thank you for having me.